show behind me uh, we just finished up bought a few coins uh, we're gonna take them back to the house show you guys some stuff uh, but let's uh, sit down with Dick talk with him a little bit uh, really nice guy sold us a lot of coins today so uh, we'll see you at the house but enjoy the interview okay everyone we're here with mr. Dickey at the Orange Texas coin show um, mr. Dickey can you introduce yourself to the audience I'm Dickie Parsley. I'm from Jennings, Louisiana. Um, I've been dealing in rare coins and stuff now for probably 25 years. My passion is type coins, older coins, busts, seated, and barbers. That, that's really what I like, the older type stuff from uh, 1700s to uh, uh, about 1916, something like that. After that, it's pretty much common stuff to me. Yes, sir. So, how did you get into collecting, coin dealing, the whole experience? I started metal detecting about 30 years ago, and it just took off from there. I started finding some decent coins, nothing high dollar, but silver, a lot of silver. And uh, I just got into it there, started going to coin shops, and then I started going to shows. And I've been to shows all over. Uh, the fun show in Florida, which is a major show, about five every year in Houston. Uh, I make several shows a year. Yes, sir. And, uh, uh, just a fascinating hobby, and it's one of the few hobbies that you have that whenever you decide to get out, you can make a little bit of money. You may not make a lot of profit, but it's not like bass fishing. You go buy a boat, I had one. Every time you go fishing, you spend 40 $50 in baits, and it's all gone. And when, then you turn them loose when you catch them. This, at least you have something to sell when you're ready to quit. So it's a good deal. Yes, sir. So if somebody was wanting to get into coin collecting and dealing, what, what would you say is the most important thing to keep in mind? Most important thing? Well, there's two of the most important things of all. You never buy coins off the television is number one. Because they, they doubled what they were. And never buy an ugly coin because you can't resell it. You can't afford one a little nicer, don't buy it, then you got your money saved up. Never buy an ugly coin and don't buy off the TV. That's the two best advices I can give you. Would you say relationships are important in this in this business and this hobby? Oh, definitely. And man, it's easy to build a relationship here because everybody's happy. They either buying or selling. You know, it's a really nice, nice hobby to be in. Yes, sir. I've made, I've made hundreds of friends. You hear You'll break your camera, don't you? <laughs> so, Mr. Dickey, where, where can people find you and uh, talk to you and possibly bring con collections to you? Okay, I'm in Jennings. I also have a feed store in Jennings. That's off I-10 between Lafayette and Lake Charles. Uh, it's easy to reach me, 337-824-6212. Yes, sir. And I'll buy collections. It doesn't matter how big they are or how small they are. Any, any kind of collection you have, especially the older type stuff, that's what I really like. And I'm, and I'm fair on my prices. So do you have anything to say to uh, any of our Cajun dealers or our Cajun audience? Our Cajun audience? Uh, come on, ça va? How you doing? And uh, it, it's just a good hobby. And everybody, every family has a few coins. And, uh, you know, you pass them down, they get split up between the kids, then the grandkids, and... And, and that's a good thing to do. And if you have something that's not valuable, especially, uh, because a lot of times the grandkids will get a hold of it, they don't know what it is, so they'll go and play with it, lose it outside, or spend it at, at a candy store, you know? Yes, sir. But uh, as far as for being a good, a good hobby, this is the most enjoyable hobby I've ever had, and I've done a lot of different things. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Dickey. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Are you guys enjoying today's video? If you are, leave a like button, comment your thoughts down below, and uh, subscribe if you're new. Okay guys, wanted to show you a few things that we uh, picked up. These are the things that we have on the website, just added, AcousticCollectibles.com. Uh, we have a link below if you guys want to check that out. Um, here are a few things that we got over the weekend, 
and a few things that, you know, kind of the big highlights of the show. Uh, here's an interesting one as well. Um, and then we also have some stuff we're adding to the personal collection. So let's get started over on this side. So let's start at the top here. We have this nice 1938D uh, Buffalo Nickel. I would say it's like MS62, MS63. It's got some decent kind of reverse toning. Uh, you know, I thought it was decent enough to, you know, pay a couple bucks for and see what would happen with it. Uh, I don't really buy raw buffaloes too often, but, you know, it seemed like an interesting coin. And it kind of was added into the lot with these two coins. I uh, bought these kind of just as knickknacks to throw on the website as well. This one has definitely been cleaned. Um, it's 1940, uh, let me see. I think it's a 1944 or 1943D, something like that. But when you flip it over, you can definitely see there's some damage to the right um, of the bands there. You know, it's an interesting coin. Uh, but my favorite one of all the raw coins this weekend uh, was this one uh, in terms of it's, you know, it's just circulated. has some interesting color as well on it. Um, I really like the just toning on both sides. I don't think this one has been cleaned, so that's pretty cool. You know, I do think this one might straight grade if you were actually to send it in. Um, what else we got to show you guys? So we have, you know, a few more rare holders here. Um, you know, 1943D MS65 full bands. You know, nice blast white coin. Don't think it would cack, but still nice pretty coin. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, keep kind of trailing along the top here. 1896 S uh, Barber Quarter. Really tough date for the grade, um, for any grade really. And so we picked this one up because we were offered it $40 below grade sheet, which is not too bad. Uh, very happy with that. I think it's a solid good four. Uh, my only concern really is on the bottom uh, left there where it says quarter. Now when you start to see the words disappear, you're almost kind of moving towards uh, the good area or the uh, AG3 area. I apologize. Um, but another awesome uh, early teen 1918 pickup. Has some interesting toning on it, the Standing Liberty Quarter. Almost looks full head as well, which I kind of like. Um, but as soon as I posted this on the website today, this is like the day before, which is Sunday. Um, Richard ended up pick picking this up. Um, very uh, interesting how as soon as something's posted, someone just likes to pick it up. Uh, thank you for the business though, brother. I really do appreciate it. Um, you know, some more meat and potatoes coins here. Nice uh, 1821 uh, Barber Half uh, XF45. I like the, the circulation on it. I like how it's nice and original. Just interesting and crusty. Still has some kind of luster on it. When you flip it over, it's got like a weird crescent. But I, I just like the coin. They offered this to me like $10 over gray sheet on these coins. So a lot of great coins at the Orange Show. Uh, and we've been moving through an IT09S uh, Lincolns like crazy. So I thought I'd pick up another one that's pretty original. And if you guys are, you know, wanting to buy coins and work with them, I would just take care of the holders because I've been having a lot of holder issues, which you're going to see down here below when I show off these buffaloes. Just stuff, you know, people just don't take care of holders and it makes the coin harder to sell, but also makes the coin harder to see in the holder. This one's not too bad, but it's an interesting date. Pretty nice one. Very happy with it. Here is a, a double die that we picked up, a 19, 1995 double die. The luster was pretty nice. No spots on the coin. MS66 red. These are actually pretty common, but, you know, if you're filling a set for double dies, you're going to want to pick up something like this just because, you know, it's a nice piece. And I think these will just go up in value over time. And they're just really inexpensive. Here's another double die that I picked up in that deal. This is a 1972 uh, double die. It's a, you know, the holder hasn't been taken care of. It's not a very pretty coin. But I, like I said, I get offered uh, coins for pretty cheap. So I'm going to pass this one on pretty cheap for you guys as well on our website. Pretty neat coin though. I'm very happy with double dies. We've kind of been on like an even keel of switching them out and bringing them in. So when we buy stuff like this, we normally sell them. And the next show, they end up popping up. So I'm very happy with that. Here's a 1968D uh, Kennedy half dollar uh, with some nice kind of like tiger toning on the obverse here. Decent grade as well. If this one was a 67, you'd be looking at a little bit more money. But there are a few scratches on the face, which do take away from that grade. Uh, there's some nice luster on the reverse. Just can't go wrong with a nice little toner like that for under 50 bucks. Uh, you know, a few more Mercury Dimes here. This one has uh, PVC on it, so I kind of discounted it a little bit. I don't think this one would cack. John Albany doesn't like uh, PVC on coins, and it's, you know, it's well understood of that. So, 
Yeah, I think I found that one for like 20 bucks or something. So not too bad of a hole filler if you want some OGHs for your collection. Here is a 1930 SOQ. Nice circulated AU58 grade. Uh, I like buying AU58 coins just because they still have luster on the coin. And uh, the details are still pretty sharp. This one was, was nice because that it actually wasn't in the case. I went up to a dealer who was talking to another dealer and they were going through all these coins in, in like a box or something. And so... You know, you sit down and try to work with them and get involved in their conversation. And then after a while, they just start handing you stuff and you start making offers. And I was very fortunate enough to buy that coin, this one, and now this SOQ from him as well. So this is a nice 1924 SOQ. has some crusty kind of original toning on the uh, on the rim there. I like this coin. I don't think it's, you know, my favorite of the bunch. But a nice early date SOQ. Uh, a nice hole filler for someone's collection for, you know, 110 bucks, not too bad. My favorite kind of pickups of the show, which I'll show you guys in a minute over here, but the group that we actually ended up buying was a lot of nice Buffalo nickels. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about them. You're going to see a better photos of them on the website. All toned, all pretty nice. And, you know, toning that I wouldn't go wow for, but uh, toning that, you know, adds a little bit of character to the coin, gives it a little bit of eye appeal. Uh, you know, you can kind of see that on uh, the reverse of these coins. A lot of them have pretty nice reverse toning, but the obverse toning kind of takes it away a little bit, in my opinion. You can kind of see that circulation on this coin, but you can see that orange kind of lifting through the back. And, uh, you know, I, I like these coins a lot because as soon as I got to the show, uh, these coins were just sitting out in the case. No one really likes buffaloes. They pass them, they pass them by. And so, you know, when I, when I was there, uh, Dickey, which is one of the dealers that you guys heard from, he had all these hanging out, and he doesn't really do shows too often. So I just picked all these up, and he took off, you know, $10, $15, $20 per coin. So uh, Dickie is a pretty awesome dealer. Really hooked us up for you guys. Uh, but check out this reverse on this coin. I really like the, uh, I really kind of like where the buffalo head is. I don't know, it's a really strong strike on the reverse here. Um, but when you flip it over the obverse, kind of has a little bit of dingy toning on it. But, you know, eye appeal is everywhere. Uh, on these coins. I like this one a lot too from Dickey because it's got toning on both sides. Luster is pretty nice on both sides as well. It is a common date but you know I do think a coin like this would cack you know and uh, there's a little bit of scuffs on the holders like usual but just trying to be honest with all the coins we do end up selling because it is important for you guys to know that you know what you're buying when you pick it up and giving you guys these videos kind of gives you a you know a tangible feel of all these coins before you buy them and then you can also see them on our website but let's move over to a few more coins here here are kind of some of the bigger coins from the show I already had these sold uh, because we knew someone would pick these up uh, shout out to Richard a really great guy a really great client of ours very happy to have him this is a nice 1942 uh, proof mercury dime has some interesting streaks you know, on the obverse but I don't really don't really think it takes away from the eye appeal of the coin uh, still has some uh, really nice, you know, proof luster. Uh, when you flip it over, it has like a cameo reverse on it. But nice old NGC holder. The holder is well taken care of. The coin is nice and original. He also picked up another pretty cool coin. This is 1863, uh, Mint State 62 Indian head scent. Uh, I've been picking up, you know, 60s to 64 uh, Indian head scent just because they have really great history. Uh, pretty hard to find in Mint State. You know, when you can get them for a good price, that's something that you want to you want to jump on. And I really want to start moving into coins like this just because I really like the series and I really want to know more about them. And so sometimes when you pick them up, you start to learn more about varieties, start to learn more about uh, their history. And it really gets you intrigued, uh, you know, with this series. But I picked this coin up. This is probably one of the biggest scores of the show, which I didn't know about. So a few minutes before filming with you guys, um, I asked somebody what, what they thought this uh, was worth. I paid $150 uh, at the show, and he says this one's in a ballpark around $400. Bucks. So I took a stab on this one. I thought, you know, $150, bucks, this one's too cheap. I don't know much about it. I don't know how to price it. But picking this coin up, I thought it had nice luster. has a little spot on the uh, obverse, as you saw. But want to move into Mexican coin as well, as well because they have been pretty hot lately. And I really do enjoy the designs overall. Here's a few coins that we got over the weekend. Uh, this is a 1936 Buffalo Nickel graded AU58. I think this one has the potential of being AU58 plus 
And, uh, you know, an AU58 Plus is really uh, hard to get, especially with the 1936, um, just because, you know, there hasn't been one that has been graded yet in AU58 Plus, so I might give this one a go because, you know, an AU58 Plus, this one will be a pop one, and it might be, you know, a couple hundred bucks to buy this coin uh, in that grade. So I, I paid $15 for this coin over the internet, and I think this one might have a good shot, but we'll see how it goes. Might throw a CAC sticker on it just for uh, giggles. Uh, here's one of my favorite coins of the week. This is uh, an 1882 Proof 63 Cameo uh, Seated Dime. You can kind of see that Cameo on the obverse here. Uh, I just like the contrast. This, and the obverse is kind of what I look at most of the time when I'm trying to buy a coin. If the obverse isn't beautiful, sometimes I just pass on it. And when you flip it over, you know, it's it still has uh, s some nice proof fields there. It's got a little bit of haze and some toning on there, but it really doesn't take away too much from the coin. And if you guys are wanting to protect your coins, I would use plastic like this or um, some plastic like this right here. Um, plastic like this, you know, a little Ziploc baggie almost really takes care of your holders just so over time, you know, you don't have to reholder them. Or if you want to preserve, uh, you know, a nice holder, kind of like an old NGC holder, an old PCGS holder, OGH holder, stuff like that, you know, it's really worth your money. I think it's only like five or six cents uh, for each one, so not too bad. Here's another coin that we picked up with that Buffalo. Here's an 1866, uh, two cent piece, great XF45 Brown. You know, I like the coin. It is a little dark, but you know, it's it's a it's a nice hole filler, very affordable for anybody that wants to pick up a coin like this. You know, and it's a nice uh, filler for the set, like I said. But here's a coin. So we got this coin with this coin, and let me show you this one. I talk about abuse on a holder here. This one is a uh, nice, you know, Isabella quarter that I really like. But when I got it in, you see all these like black spots on here, like all these holes or like bubbles. I think literally someone smoked a cigarette like right above this holder, uh, maybe for a few years or something. But the embers of that cigarette is just stuck on the holder. And I don't know if they left it in like an oven or something. I don't know, it's it's a very confusing coin. I'm probably gonna return this one, but you know, treat your holders with respect if you can. You know, sometimes you know they get left in the wrong spot, but that's okay. But there's some people that just I mean they just beat on these things and it really just takes away from being able to sell it. Uh but I do like the, the coin just because of the toning. Uh Isabella's are pretty hard to find with toning. So I might try to try to get a discount uh just for the holder and then I'll just reholder the coin. Last but not least, we want to show you guys the cream of the crop, the stuff that I might keep myself. Um, but really awesome coins here. Let me show you guys probably uh you know the the peso was a good pickup, but this one was uh, just as well as a good pickup here. Uh you can see the awesome uh reverse toning on this 1963D Washington quarter. Uh, you know, you see that blue, that pink. Very natural toning, um, and you can also see a nice rainbow going over Washington's head. And so I was asking a dealer about a few coins, and he was pricing them way too much. You know, you really couldn't make any money on them. And so, you know, when I moved away from the holder coins, I go, I went to go ask about this coin. And so he saw it like this in the case. He wouldn't even open the case really. So I was like, you know, what, what do you want on this coin right here? He said, you know, eight bucks. And so I said, okay, you know, let me take a look at it. And so, you know, I'm looking at it like this and I flip it over and I'm like, yeah, I couldn't pull my money out fast enough. That's the problem. And so he didn't really see the reverse yet either. He's like, dang, I should have looked at that reverse. But paid eight dollars for this. This one probably, you know, full full retail after everything's said and done. Probably a 250, 300, 300 dollar coin. Um, so you can, you know, make some good deals at a show. Uh, sometimes more than 10%. You just have to know what coins uh, are, are good to pick up. And if you have clients for them, I have a few people that are really interested in that coin once it comes back. Um, here's another coin that I uh, picked up at the show. Uh, no, actually not at the show. I picked this one up on eBay. This is a 1984 double die, uh, re, uh, double die obverse uh, Lincoln cent. And the reason why I picked this coin up is because there's actually only five of these double dies in uh, in Rattler holders. Uh, there's three in MS64 red brown. There's one in MS65 red brown, and there's one in MS66 red brown. And the reason why I love this, let me try to zoom in here. The reason why I love this double die so much is because what you see is ear right there. There's actually an, an extra earlobe right below that earlobe. 
which is actually pretty cool. It's not a doubling of the date or doubling of liberty, it's doubling of a earlobe. And uh, you know, there's a lot of scuffs on this holder, but there's actually a little bit of extra chin down below there as well. I'll actually zoom out real quick and I'll show you guys um, an extra picture to the right of me of what exactly you guys can look for um, on 1984s to see if you have a double die or not. But a double die in this holder with some kind of interesting toning. I'm very thankful for a coin like this. I might keep it, I might not keep it. I've been keeping way too much lately, so uh, that one might be for sale very soon. Let's move on to the Buffaloes. You know, we've been adding a lot of Buffaloes to the set, um, but if you could take a look at this coin real quick, the toning um, on the video doesn't look too nice, uh, but this coin really, I think, should have gotten a star grade. Um, when you look at it, the luster is very strong on the coin, and let me try to give you guys one for a comparison here. So if we pick up these two coins, move them together, um, you can kind of see so you see the luster on that coin, you kind of see the luster on this coin. The luster on most of the buffaloes are going to look like the one on the right. But this one, uh, the luster is just very strong. Um, and let me try to flip this one over for you guys really fast and show you. Um, but you know, this coin, the, l the luster is just insane on it. This one kind of drew me in at first and then I ended up buying all of these. And buying these two as well. But let me show you guys these two coins before we wrap up today's video. Uh, I picked up this coin just because it has this really interesting green uh, green leg on it. Um, finding green on buffaloes is very hard and they actually sell for quite a bit of money so I don't really have prices on stuff like this yet um, but when I do I'll make sure to let you guys know just because sometimes it's hard to research certain toning patterns, certain colors on certain uh, series like the buffalo nickel and here's another one with green toning on it as well. You know, uh, just pretty, pretty, pretty pieces. Um, but very happy. I'm, I'm starting to fall in love more and more with buffaloes. Uh, I'm starting to love more and more rattlers. And I'm starting to learn more about seated stuff. Seated stuff has been a real blessing to me as well. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this part of the video so far. Let's roll to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, you know, what we found, all that stuff, uh, subscribe, comment your thoughts. We'll see you in the next one.